Just after Malika uh, and just uh, after Rajita and Christopher um, it is a nice prison. Thank you, Christopher. Uh, th thank you, Christopher. Uh, that's an interesting challenge. So I have roughly 15, 18 minutes uh, to try to wrap up uh, intellectually. I am, I am talking to the mind at this moment. Uh, a few points that we have crossed uh, during our uh, three days. Normally, I should have a scheme there, which should appear, yeah, um, in order not to clarify, but to, to put uh, some coherence in what we, we have done. I draw this very simple map with entrepreneurship, leadership, and statementship, who are the, the key axis of uh, our seminar. And on the left, these four levels of consciousness who are the person or of organization, the persons, the companies, the economy, and the society. And just with this small chart, uh, you can just explore yourself uh, how either in your country or how in your own company you will locate yourself. If I take my country, for example, my country is rather good sometimes on statementship. In the sad war of Georgia, for example, in 2008, where the right man was rather at the right place, the chairman uh, being the, the chairman of the European Union. But if you take the same country, put, looking to entrepreneurship, it's just a disaster. Uh, as a country, we are extremely hostile to entrepreneurs and I will grade us very low on that. If you take companies, companies in South Africa have been a, a, a key instrument in uh, uh, banning apartheid uh, a few decades ago. So I, I, will wrote, I will quote companies in South Africa very, very high on the statementship level, and so on and so forth. It's just, just a, a small tool to remind. And what was interesting, uh, I have appreciated that uh, during the, the conference, is that on the left, you can see that the axis of values, first I will talk about time after, the axis of values, in fact, is shared with every, in any organizational setting. Because a person has values, but a company also has values, has corporate values. And an economy can be driven more or less, depending on the place where it is, by values which are close or far away from one another, from country to another. And societies also are rooted in implicit values which, which will differ, of course, from one country to another. So you can, you can look at that and rephrase many things that we have received uh, with this very, very simple chart. Last but not least, time. And now I will comment a, a little more the, these various items uh, as a kind of red throat. Well, first question we have had with time in the very beginning of the conference is, are we on a Krosner's time or are we on a Kairos time? Are we on urgency? Part of the people, I guess, in the room are feeling the sense of urgency. But reciprocally, if you find a feeling of urgency, you can be extremely threatening, or you can, be, you can go toward a high level of, uh, uh, of culpability, which can be extrem extremely paralyzing. If I go a little more uh, to the persons now, what we have heard is something which is well known, but which was very well exemplified. Remarkable good news for those who could feel either depressed or exhausted by the size of the issue that we are facing, is that just personal action has immense consequences. The street vendors in Tunisia has been longly referred to, has changed the life for whole countries. And I am personally, new, we are personally investors because we have a few savings. And the decision we will make from that are perfectly, perfectly free. I am a voting citizen, so I can act there uh, on, the, on, on the bottom line within the society with my own freedom. I am an economic professional. 
I am a voting citizen, and so on and so forth. Um, so personally, personal action has immense consequences. The second point I will mention on the, on the personal side is we are persons here who are belonging to very elite social class, international one, and it was interesting to see how, of course, intelligence, emotion, and spiritual dimension was present all over every single person, but depending whether you are fighting for water, depending whether you are consuming frantically because you are just discovering uh, market consumption, or depending whether you have been safe enough to develop a political global consciousness, uh, you can be at a different moment of your own equilibrium uh, between all these three levels. I think that, that's it. that is important and n nobody, I think nobody, has answered to Malika's question on Thursday afternoon, which is indeed a very important one. On the economy, uh, in the dialogue between a few of us, a few of the speakers, uh, we re rediscover how the, ru the rules of laws can have immense consequences, and especially in two opposite di directions, in places where you don't have enough laws, so people are not feeling uh, protected enough uh, to do things uh, clearly in transparency and where property rights and protection towards spo spoliation is not really assured, but reciprocally, if you take uh, very sophisticated countries, like my countries, the amount of rules or, and laws is such that it's just nearly impossible to create something new. And so the balance between relation to laws and rulers' laws and what is fear and uh, uh, what is entrepreneurship spirit is something which is extremely important in the organization of our society. A second point I will mention beyond law is I think we have touched among this debate a few questions for the future uh, which are interesting challenges in various places we can work in. The first one is the limits of limited liability companies. In the world where we are now, uh, it's likely that we will have to face a debate either about the moral legitimacy or about uh, the organizational efficiency of the ultimate limited liability. And uh, linked to that, but not only linked to that, at the interface between companies and economy, there I put giant companies, when companies are too big to fail, where a company can pay, can become really political activist through the money when US members of the parliament are spending 50% of their time, of their working time, just doing fundraising. Uh, you can think about uh, a new situation where the uh, interconnection between personal interests within the giant companies and uh, the ability uh, to organize public good through the political offices is a challenge that we have really today. Another question that we, we have faced uh, among the rule of the economy is uh, how you measure the key elements of success of a company. Today we have one way mainly to success that, uh, but do we have the appropriate yards, accounting yardstick? Do we, are we able, in some case, to internalize a part of the externalities that we are creating? This is at the level of the company, but reciprocally at the level of the whole economy. Um, the yardstick we are using between GDP, Human Development Index, and so on and so forth, how are we um, designing and, and drawing the representation of what we are doing collectively, I think is a question, is an open question. An open question around that, as a, as a consequence of that, is that these yardsticks have also some consequences for our relation to time. If you take quarterly reports versus annual reports, it's a, this has big consequence 
in terms of relation to time. If you take the IFRS and the volatility effect of uh, IFLS and the cyclicity effect of IFRS, sorry if I am a little technic on that, uh, there is an issue there that probably in some circles or, or others uh, uh, we can work on something. Fourth, values. Again, a few nudges, not the whole piece of the case that we have received for three days, but just a small drawing, a small impressionist picture, which is just my picture. Um, the, the first question, which is in which I can say, just at the interface between society, economy, and, and values, um, it's, and we have touched that uh, a, a few, few times, it's what can be lines of decision-making? Will they be only my very personal values? Um, can the very poor in my own country and the consequences of a decision on that particular population be a line of decision? Can Mother Nature, in the broadest sense, the Earth, with the carbon footprint, with the pollution, and so on, can be one of the key cr criterions of our, of my own decision-making process? In a company, how will I balance between employees, shareholders, take, uh, stakeholders, and so on? And last but not least, uh, how will I try to work on a decision process which in some cases will be very personalist, in some other cases will be significantly collective, but a collective decision-making process can conduce either to inclusive team building, which is interesting, of course, if we want to humanize globalization, or can conduce to irres irresponsible and anonymous decision, whose nobody is really accountable for. What type of decision processes I am working on? Second point I think that we, we have crossed uh, is of course all the, the remarkable words uh, about the leaders. And the small nudge that I have taken from that is this tragic reality that 80% of the population or 90% have a negative mind eye, while the leaders for many, many different origin and mainly for origin of his early uh, of his early youth is someone who will have a positive eye but something that we ha we, we have not touched really at this point is that this contradiction can use of course with towards the solidness of the, the of the leader where they will be balanced between joy and empathy which is their deep soul pro probably but the suffering of their solidness very often. So how courage can overcome that, how this person can resolve their own courage uh, in some spaces where they reconnect with themselves, that's an important issue for them. And last, and last I will finish with that, uh, which is a uh, relation towards time. Many persons are feeling uh, an urgency because of uh, the 1.6 planet, because of the fake economy we are in, because of the 700 trillions that Hernando was, was talking about, and so on and so forth. This is true on one part. But reciprocally, and I think there is there very nice ambivalence. Uh, if you think that uh, leaders are rooted in personal spiritual values, in the broadest sense of spiritual values, the historical wisdoms and religions uh, of the human king, whatever they will be, also teach us that today it's time to take care of today. But partly tomorrow we ta will take care for itself which means don't be paralyzed by the future and live in the prison. And I think there is a, a nice ambivalence in terms of our own relation to time there, which has to be emphasized. If I, sit, if I cite that, it is because yesterday in the afternoon I was very impressed by the number of persons who expressed their concerns or their questions towards education. 
And I think we, will, we are always running the risk as mature adults, I would say, to transfer our own anxieties of persons who are in a generation where they have the responsibility to the younger generation. And tracing our own anxieties, not being able to face the real challenge we are facing, and putting on their shoulders absolutely immense um, um, weights, I will say. And this is very, very important in our talks. I can say because I am living with, with uh, the new generation in a place which is extremely international, 40% of our students are, are international from 90 different nationalities, that the young generation, the one who are between 20 and 25 today, are extremely keen in looking for humanizing globalization. Today, uh, the best um, McKinsey, Goldman Sachs, and so on and so forth, who, want, who, who are coming to, to uh, high on our campus, are very depressed or very challenged by the fact that piles of money are not enough. And uh, today, the young generation is really asking to the companies to have something meaningful to do. Their relation to time, their relation to money, their relation to basic e equilibrium within the society is extremely demanding and uh, humanizing globalization will be words which will be very close to them. And if I cite that towards the relation to time, it's to quote this nice Chinese proverb. If you think one year ahead, plant wheat. If you think 10 years ahead, plant trees. If you think one century ahead, educate people. And so in our relation to time, when we feel an urgency on, one's, on one hand, but reciprocally, wisdom will recommend us not to think we could act as God, I think we have to, to think about that. And last, how to reconciliate that. To reconciliate that, I will leave that to a French poet who is Bernanos. I will quote him first in French and after that in English, who said, Le pessimiste et l'optimiste sont deux imbéciles qui se renvoient dos à dos. L'optimisme est la caricature et la dérisoire caricature de l'espérance. In English, it will, it will be the optimist and the pessimist person will be uh, two idiots mirroring one another. Optimism will be the pale caricature of hope. That's the hope I wish you as leaders. Thank you. Dear colleagues, Pierre has done an excellent job of uh, doing the red thread for us. I would like you, please, to give him a special applause for doing the red thread for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now for the final word, we go to Christopher, uh, who is, of course, president of the Zamat Summit Foundation, which has put the whole thing together. Thank so you, please, Christopher. Which, which is the button here again? Gentlemen, I will not make a long, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will not make a long speech because I think you've heard many speeches. I just would like to go, go over a very quick overview of what was the vision of the Zermatt Summit and where are we going. So as you understood, we want to create a platform. Actually, we want to start a new community. And this is why every one of you here in this room is important. You will say we're only 200 people. But you count, and I will try to explain how, you can, how we can move from concepts to actions. So obviously, we've, we've invited people from the business community, but we need more business people, obviously, in the next edition. We have improved, I think, since the first one. We also need people from civil society. We need people from government, which we had few of this time. Uh, we had people from the academic world, we have people from developing countries, not enough because that is half of the world and as we know, half the world is hungry and thirsty. And we also want to invo involve the, the culture, the arts, I think you have seen this and I want to really thank 
Elizabeth and Malika for this wonderful uh, breaks, which has got our left and right brain working uh, during this meeting, and also our hearts. Uh, we also would like to have, uh, and we will continue, of course, to the spiritual side and the spiritual leaders, because we feel as persons, spirituality is part of our lives. So we're not ashamed, and we need courage to talk about that too, on the contrary. And we would like to also involve the deprived. Now, this is a tricky thing to do, and we will learn from our friends in Chile who have been doing this. And I will try to attend the meeting this, this year. Now, how do we move from concepts to action? you will ask, because this is always the problem with these meetings, is you, you hear wonderful things and you are uplifted and you are empowered and then you go home and then back to normal life. And so really we would like to stay connected with you. This is the first issue. How do we stay connected with you? Well, we will try to organize two meetings between this Zamat Summit and the next Zamat Summit, which is to try to work on these, on these objectives, because we have four concepts which we are trying, or four actions which we have tried to integrate in the program of the Zamat Summit. The first one is to conceptualize and educate. The other one was to inspire and transform, mainly through testimonials, through real life stories. And finally, the most difficult one is how to replicate and scale up. Because you hear wonderful stories, you hear, but they are small in one places, and so how can you multiply this? How can we learn? And I think we are, we are getting away from big models to many, many, many different solutions, many people having brilliant ideas and that are brave and courageous people. So we want to stay connected through the internet site. Some people suggested that last year. We have tried to improve our internet site, but there are some tools on internet that we can get some of the ideas that are in this room out in the world. I saw a lot of people on uh, uh, Twitter and other tools. So I think this will be one way. The second way is to bring in young leaders. We are also concerned that um, we want to, we feel the next generation, we have responsibility, but the next generation has even more responsibility than us to change things. So we would like to address young leaders. So we will try to organize between now and next summit some meetings for young leaders and for senior leaders. Finally, I would like to thank all those who have worked here, I cannot name everyone, uh, all the people who have organized this, this meeting, uh, and um, the Echo Philos team and others, uh, my team who is standing back down there, they have done a fantastic job. forget, and she's absolutely right, the, uh, the people who have transcribed or translated from English to French and even for uh, Dr. Ebadi yesterday. So thank you to the ladies of that. Thank you to all the people who have been filming this event. So don't be worried, we're not going to use these films for, we want to put some of these speeches on internet because we feel this is really a way to, to address a larger audience. Uh, if some of you in the audience uh, I've heard were concerned that we filmed you and you're absolutely against, do we show any of your pictures? We will respect that, obviously. Um, I would like also to remind you of the next Zamat Summit Oh, first of all, I'd like to thank also, and I will not name them all, all the partners, all the sponsors, all the people from, who have helped us who are on this list, which I named in my opening speech. Thank you. Uh, normally, when you leave the, Glo uh, the Clinton Global Initiative, you have to sign a big check. Otherwise, they don't, you, they don't let you out of the room. We will not ask you for a big check, but obviously, we will come back in contact with some of you because we need also your support in that sense. And we're also looking for projects. So we would like to, to define some projects with some of our partners, which we will contact after this meeting. Finally, to remind you of the next meeting, uh, next year, on the theme of Towards the Common Good, in French, Vers le Bien Commun, on June 21st and 23rd. So thank you again, ladies and gentlemen. 
And uh, we hope to see you next year and stay connected with us, please. Bye bye. Thank you. Taking the cap of the red thread for, for 10 seconds, I think the standard ovation is really for Christopher Yay. and for the, the outstanding work of the foundation. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you very much. We, we need to thank Prabhu also, who's done a fantastic job in coordinating this meeting. And uh, thank you very much, Prabhu. Please come up. Mm -hmm. And because I, th I want to thank also my uh, partners in the, the, the Conseil de Fondation, how do you say this in English? The yes. Foundation Board, Antonin Pujos. Uh, Father Nicholas, if he's there. Yeah. Nicholas, he's there at the back. <laughs> Nicolas Michel. <laughs> and Ted, Ted Malloc, if you're here. Ted. And the others I will not name, but it's uh, Jean-René Fournier. And uh, did I forget someone? I don't think so. Thank you.